Thank you. Welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board, Tuesday, April 9th, regular business meeting. If we could start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Right. Item one is adjustments to the agenda. Tonight we would like to adjust the agenda by moving item five, which is presentations and recognitions of a lot of excellent students. We're going to move that right after um, approval of the school board minutes. So if the school board could make a note of that. <clears throat> item two. May I have a motion, please? I make a motion that we approve the school board minutes on the executive session on Tuesday, March 12th of 2024, and the regular business meeting minutes from Tuesday, March 12th, 2024. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Now moving to item five, presentations. First up. We have the girls and boys swim team, Class B state champions. Um, we have special recognition of David Steinbrick, the 2024 Varsity Maine Boys Swimmer of the Year, and Ben Raymond as the 2024 Swim Coach of the Year. So we're hoping that representatives, or if the whole team, whatever, people want to crowd around back over there, but we'd love to hear from um, some representatives and coaches, and maybe David, uh, just tell us a little bit about your excellent seasons. Come on up. Yeah, thank you. Start us off. All right. I'll wait for my co-captain, Cookie Molly, to get down Come here. On. Yeah, I know that one. Okay. And my other co-captain, Cormac, he's coming too. All right, so we had a great season again. We obviously made it three straight. That was really awesome. It was the first time the boys have ever done that um, to win three state titles. The girls also won three straight, but they've done it quite a bit more than the boys. <laughs> that was nice to get that. Um, and we had a lot of numbers this year for the boys team, more than the girls, which again, doesn't usually happen. So I think Cormac and I were especially proud about that. Um, we had a lot of participation in the state meet. I think everybody on our team except for two or three guys qualified. So we were really happy with Coach and how he, you know, put us to work and got some results. So, Cormac, do you want to say anything? I mean, just <laughs> boys had an amazing season, so did the girls. I mean, as a team, we just did really, really well together through training, through practices, and performed amazingly at all our meets. So yeah, really proud of the season we had, for sure. Um, on the girls' side, we didn't have an easy win like the boys did. Um, we were down, <laughs> no shade, no shade. We were down 70 points going into the meet to Camden Hills. They were reclassed from Class A. They won Class A last year. Um, and so we were really nervous. We had a team of about 11 girls, so definitely on the smaller side a lot. I think Camden Hill's team was about 25. Um, but watching the boys win the night before, we kept our spirits high. We went in and everyone performed, everyone scored. Um, I'm really proud of our team and we were able to get the state title. I think it was about 12 points that we got the state title by. So I'm really proud of the team and I know it will be in good hands next year. Thank you. So could the, all of you, the team, the coaches, come on up here for a picture, please? Come on. I'd have to make some rows. There are a lot of people.
Next up, we have music program honors at both the middle school and the high school. We're going to start with the middle school and um, so there are a lot of names, but I feel like students deserve this recognition. So I'm, I'm gonna read those names off. And, and if anybody, if I, I don't know if there's a, a music department teacher here that can- and I think Caitlin and Missy are here. I can't even tell who's in the audience. Oh, they're all here. Yay! So, Come on down. Yay. Caitlin, would you be willing to read off the names Well, you, they're yours, like, I'm. <laughs> All right. Beautiful, I will let you take that. Helpful. And you can also frame it a little bit, because um, tell people a little bit about, like, audition or selection and. All right, part. so we'll start with sixth grade. Um, for sixth graders, we have a nominated festival, but we feel it's very important for our students to still have an audition experience. Um, so our, all of our students that are interested in participating audition for us. We're allowed to, we can nominate um, a certain percentage of those students for the festival. Um, so we had 15 students total that were accepted between band and chorus, and they participated in a one-day festival at Gorham High School with guest conductors. Um, we want to start with our sure. lovely chorus students first. We had Azra Aziz, Emerson Mitchell, Fiona Welch, and Willa Wiggins. For chorus. And for our band, we had Laura Ferguson, Penelope Rauscher, Lucy Twig, Colden Kunkler, Connor Barrett, Amelie Chardon, Maddie Ross, Lucas Haddad, uh, Matthew Kerr, Lucy, Luce Blake, and Miles Schroeder. We want to I was like, since there are background. so many, maybe you should break it up between sixth and seventh and eighth. Yeah, yeah we've got a big group for seventh and eighth. Sixth graders, come on down, have your pictures taken. Do. The rest are home busy practicing, so exactly. they can make exactly. it. So um, we also have an honors festival for seventh and eighth graders. That is an audition festival. Um, that is almost all of the middle schools in <coughs> MMEA District 1, which is basically from South Portland South. Um, we had 28 students from CMS represent us in that festival. Um, it was a two-day festival at Sanford High School. Um, <clears throat> for band, we had Caitlin Eaton, who is first chair flute, um, Whitman Falk, Chloe Blackstone, who is first chair, clarinet first chair, just means they got the top score for the festival. Um, Lisa Kurt, clarinet, Aiden Diamond, bass clarinet, Alin Wallet, bass clarinet, Annika Work, alto saxophone, Lucy Carmelini, alto saxophone, Brendan Oakley, alto saxophone, Jonah Milton, Barry saxophone, also first chair, Isabel Baum, trumpet, first chair, Gideon Straw, trumpet, Lorelai Rogers, trumpet, uh, Price Wools, trombone, Bennett Kang, trombone, Kaylee Hansen, trombone, Emmett Wood, trombone, Eric Frey, tuba, also first chair, Patrick Rolf, um, tuba, Benjamin Foley, percussion, Evan Franks, percussion. And for chorus? For chorus, we had Edie Woods, soprano, Riley McGovern Pitsy, soprano, Alana Hill, soprano, Jillian Tasker, soprano, Lily Walsh, soprano, Lily Northup, soprano, and Grace Geyer, alto. And now for the high school 2024 Maine VOC All-State Festival. I don't know, Rob or Joanne here? 
to talk about? Yes. Thank you. so much. So um, this is for, B I'm sorry, BOC Allstate and Jazz Allstate? Yes. Okay. So um, we also have students that do it for district and stuff like that too. So um, for BOC Allstate, uh, it's an audition festival um, for the entire state of Maine. And uh, it's band, orchestra, and chorus, for those of you keeping score. And uh, with some Jazz Allstate, this year we had two Jazz Allstate students, uh, Tess Straw and uh, Sebastian Hesser who are, are here in the house somewhere. Um, and those, those are taken uh, on, you know, they're individual, there are three bands that they do in the jazz band. Uh, that was up in, um, was it Bangor this year? Where was it? Camden, sorry, Camden. Um, this year, and that's a, a two-day festival up in Camden. And for the band for BOC Allstate, we had, um, hold on one second, Let me make sure I get this right. Sophia Toon, again Sebastian Hesser, Ava Corbin, Sage Evans, uh, Tess Straw, and Phoebe e Evans, and Laura Layton uh, on violin. And yeah, I think it's important to note that um, of the first five flutes in the Allstate band, four of them came from Cape. So I was really, really exciting about that. And um, for chorus? Uh, for chorus this year, um, the students, well, as in every year, they have a rigorous audition process. They have to sing an Italian aria. They have to sing um, a choral piece maintaining their part all by themselves. And they also have to do sight reading. So um, it's always very impressive uh, for our students who come back with really high scores in their sight reading. This year, we had two students accepted to the All-State course, and they are Declan Seifries and Noemi Market Grainer. I know, I know for sure some of our students are away on vacation. We were missing a lot of kids actually today, but some of them are up here, so come on up. Yes. All right. Last one, I promise. Um, so we had a middle school and high school honors jazz festival. Theoretically, it got snowed out. It was our storm that we had last week. Um, but these students worked really hard in preparation for this festival, working on their music for several weeks. So we did want to acknowledge them. Um, so for the middle school, we have Kaylee Hansen, Gideon Straw, Hayden DeBrun, Eric Frey, Jonah Milton, Brendan Oakley, Aiden Diamond. And for the high school, we have Ian Connolly, Neil Gabrielson, Sebastian Hesser, Hadley Johnson, Story Straw, and Tess Straw. Caitlin, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you mind coming down to the podium again, please? It's a good thing. You, you uh, sent this out to us uh, last week, I believe, uh, about Cape being named again for the ninth year in a row. Uh, I believe it's the Name uh, Foundation as one of uh, the best communities for music education. So can you tell us about that a little bit and yes. what that means? And so the NAM Foundation, um, every year, um, it, it, na it designates different communities around the country and different states um, that are, they 
feel are the best communities that support music education, both on the school and community level. Um, so we've been fortunate to be designated. This is our ninth year in a row. Uh, but there, have only, there are only three school districts in Maine that have been designated that. So we feel really fortunate about that. And I think it's a nice, nice feather in our community's cap. Um, and it's because of all of the people in this room and in front of me. It's not like we, we think about it just as our band and our course rooms and our music rooms, but we have this great music program because of all of the support from everybody in this town. So we feel very thankful and appreciative. Thanks. All right. It's a good night when there are lots of recognitions. It is great. So next up, um, we have, hopefully, I think we have representatives from our very successful Cape Robotics team. Um, we had members that competed in the main championships, and I believe we had a group win states. We did, state Pretty great. And um, several groups that qualified for a spot at Worlds. So we'd love for some representatives to step up here and tell us a little bit about that. We always like it when you bring at least one robot. We do have some robots. Thank you. We had two teams win the state championship. So both the high school division uh, and the middle school division, separate championships, plus another team win the design award. Uh, we had a great season again this year. I'm super proud of these kids. Uh, a couple of new teams, including a new sixth grade team. Um, every team competed at least twice. Lots of teams competed uh, much more than that. And, uh, and it's still a young, t it's a young program still. We've got uh, something like more than two dozen fifth graders who meet every week who are ready to come up into the uh, <clears throat> sort of varsity program next year. So I'm super proud of them. Um, I feel grateful to be coaching it. And uh, we couldn't do it without the support of the community and the schools and uh, parents and local businesses. Uh, so thank you all. And I think, uh, I think my, my guys have a few things they might need, like to say, so. Yeah, so I would just like to reiterate how good of a season we had. I literally can't, could not be more thankful. And I would really like to thank the school board and everyone, all our sponsors who supported us on getting here. And this program is very important to me. And it's leading to me to become an engineer. One day I'm going to school for engineering at college. And um, it truly puts the E in STEM here at CAPE, being engineering. And it has just been a great last eight years of doing this. So yeah, thank you. Uh, hello, again, I would just like to reiterate how much I thank you guys for your support on Cape Robotics. So this is my second year on Cape Robotics. I'm a middle schooler, uh, and the rest of my members of my team were first years. And I think really at the beginning, we're sort of struggling out with just figuring how to do everything. But thanks to like the great mentorship of Coach Inesco and along with the senior teams, I think we've come a, a long way of like just figuring out, you know, how to work as a team, how to design the entire design process and just overall just having a great year. And thankfully, we brought back the state championship. On behalf of Team 56 here at Cape Elizabeth, I want to take a moment to express our sincere gratitude. This journey couldn't be possible without the incredible support we have behind us. First and foremost, a huge thankful to our amazing school. Your commitment to STEM and education allows us to explore the fascinating world of robotics. You provided us with the facilities, resources, and most importantly, the encouragement to push boundaries and innovate. We owe a debt of gratitude to our generous sponsors. Because of your financial backing, we are able to transform our ideas to reality. Most of all, Thank you to Mr. Nesco for coordinating and single-handedly running robotics. Without him, the robotics lab would be an empty room. Uh, last of all, we want to thank our parents for supporting us, our team, and our dreams. This experience has been more than just building robots and competing. It's about teamwork, problem solving, and critical thinking. It's about learning from mistakes, celebrating our successes, and pushing ourselves to be the best we can be. Thank you. Hope for a demonstration. Yeah, can we have a demonstration? I mean, you brought the robots. <laughs> They're not just going to sit there, are they?
have your robots come on down. I could say while we're setting up for the picture, the, there's Worlds in Dallas at the end of this month. And so, of course, between the state championship and Worlds, all three teams have torn their bots down and redesigned because they've got wonderful new ideas. Thank you everybody for coming out here tonight. This is the best kind of meeting for the board where we get to celebrate all the wonderful things that the students are doing. And I'll take a couple seconds if people don't want to stay for the rest of the exciting agenda. You're welcome to go home. And I know you've got a lot of homework. We'll pause for just a second. So at this time, we are going to move to item three on tonight's agenda, which is comments from the public on agenda items. If you would like to comment on an agenda item tonight, please step to the podium, state your name and your address, and try to keep your comments to about three minutes. Okay, moving on to comments from our student representatives. Okay, hello everybody. Um, we hope that you're getting excited for April break because we are very excited for April break. Um, this month, Jack and I had the pleasure of visiting with some fourth graders for lunch. Um, this uh, last week, actually, um, they told us all about how they are having a really great year um, and actually finding it a bit easier than third grade. Um, they're specifically loving gym, recess, and art. Um, and they're a little bit nervous about the transition to middle school, but are also quite excited to be in a new space and are finding um, that there's quite a lot of support from staff around that. Um, particularly, students are really looking forward to playing in the fifth grade band and singing in choir. Um, some popular instruments were flute and trumpet. Um, they also had a really great time guessing Jack and I's ages. Apparently, I am 73 and Jack is 153. <laughs> um, we also went to the middle school to have lunch with some seventh graders, which was really fun. Um, last week was particularly exciting at CEMS. Um, spring sports had a successful start after kind of having a little bit of a difficulty um, finding coaches, um, but then it worked out fine. Um, and the middle school performance of Matilda Jr. the musical premiered last weekend, um, and I've heard that it was amazing. My sibling went and really loved it. Um, we've mentioned this before, um, but the seventh graders were really ecstatic about the new Wednesday classes, so we just wanted to kind of further highlight um, how impactful like, these more hands-on um, learning opportunities have been for students. Um, and then in terms of kind of places for growth at the middle school that they mentioned, um, there's kind of conversations around a desire for better school lunches with more options for students with dietary restrictions, um, which has also been something that students and the high school student affairs council have been talking about and trying to problem solve. Um, so we're looking into that. Um, and then finally, in regards to the new school buildings, um, middle schoolers have really voiced a clear concern, um, a clear desire rather, to maintain kind of an element of personalization within the new schools, regardless of if um, a renovation or a new rebuild occurs. Um, 
they kind of shared with us the importance of keeping things like painted ceiling tiles um, and student art in the like revised or new buildings um, in order to still make these schools feel like their own. And then they also have been advocating for kind of a renovation rather than a full rebuild. Um, basically arguing, their argument is that many students have been feeling that it's really only necessary to focus on kind of immediate um, improvements and required changes. Um, but this is like just a small group of students that we met with. Um, but we thought that regardless, it was important for student voice in those conversations to still be heard. So for the high school. Um, uh, over the high school for this Pat month, uh, we published our first edition of the Caper Chronicles, which was our new student newspaper. Um, it highlighted the start of spring sports our partnership between um, Active Minds and Kyle Cares. There was an opinion piece on teaching ASL in schools, book reviews, jokes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this past weekend, our Model UN team went to Dartmouth College up in Hanover, New Hampshire, um, and we had our most successful conference in definitely the four years I've been here, um, maybe longer. We took awards home in all nine of the committees that we were in, um, and we took home our first delegation award in eight years, so it was a great way to send off the seniors and then also uh, Mrs. Oliver because this is her last uh, conference as our advisor. Um, other things that have happened, as I said, spring sports have started. Um, for yesterday's eclipse, we all got out an hour early to go view that, which was definitely a nice um, time. Everyone's super excited for break, so you know we're all looking forward to the uh, half day on Thursday. Um, prom tickets on sale and the junior class is super, super excited to present all of their hard work starting from last May um, to now their realization of prom. And then lastly, the United States Army Field Band is on tour here in Portland. So we had them come perform at the high school, um, their chamber groups for uh, CEH students and then also sixth grade band students. Um, it was an honor to hear them play. I sadly didn't, I had physics class, which was kind of annoying. Um, but I heard it was a great time and then students are also going to Merrill uh, Auditorium tomorrow to see the full Army Field Band play, which should be a, a blast. So that's what's been going on. I'd like to give a little shout out to the Lead Delegate Award over there. Oh. Who's that? <laughs> nice job. Probably next month. We'll see that. I, I hope we do. Thank you. And I would like to just share with you how impressed I've been with both of you. I feel like it's probably our, our time together is coming to an end soon. And um, I really hope that you will share your model with your successors because I feel like you have both done an outstanding job in really bringing in the voices of all students. And um, not that we don't love hearing from about the high school, but I love that you're really, I, it feels like you're working to give us a nice picture from the entire school department. So we appreciate that very much and please share that model. We'll make sure I do. Thanks. Thank you both. So, we will now skip to, I believe we have administrative staff reports in our packets. Yes, correct. And we appreciate those reports very much. Um, and so we will move on to our business manager's report, Marsha Weeks. I know there's not, like we should applaud. <laughs> we never applaud for Mars. <laughs> so sweet. Um, good evening. For the monthly financial report, the percentage of the year that occurred as of March 31st, 75% of the year. The total general fund expenditures amounted to 70% spent. The percentage at this point last year was 73%, and the average for the past seven years was 71%. So I wanted to explain our variance right now. We have scheduled payments for the pre-K program that we'll do by the year end and debt service payments by June 30th. So this percentage point variance potentially could be less by, the, by June 30th at our year end audit. And additionally, we initiated the transfer from the town earlier this year compared to last year. So this transfer pays for the, sh the town's share for the shared salaries for technology employees, facilities management, and our business office. So I wanted to get that done a little earlier compared to last year, and it's, it's helped with our percentage variance. I would like to give an update on the school nutrition program for the month of March. They serve 17,010 lunches and 6,338 breakfast meals. 
the revenue from the state claim for March will be $88,103.94. The fund balance is not quite at break even from this claim, but by June 1st, I think, I think we'll be back on target because May is our second highest claim month. So I'm relying on that to make the difference. Okay, are there any questions for tonight? Thank you. <laughs> I know. We know, Eileen. Come on. Clap for Marcy. All right, moving on to the superintendent's report. All right, well, how awesome was that tonight um, and every month to celebrate all that our students do, and they could not do that without our great staff supporting them and certainly parents, community members, uh, and volunteers that help so much. So, wow, uh, blows me away every time uh, what we celebrate here. So, and that connects to the budget that we'll talk about later tonight. Um, the budget does matter. It does impact how well our students do. Um, so my uh, update will be real quick tonight because um, we do have to get to the budget. Um, but in terms of SBAC, the School Building Advisory Committee, uh, we've made a ton of progress in the last 13, 14 months. Um, right now, um, we have a forum tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. right in this room. Hopefully it will be full. Um, Harriman will be updating the public on the three options where they stand now um, in terms of what's in them and what is not in them, which may be more important, actually, what isn't in each option as we make our choices. Um, you also get a tax impact update from our town manager as part of that presentation and certainly have time for public comment as well. So hopefully people can come in person or watch online or, or watch at a later date. Uh, the uh, townwide survey, I think, has been put in the mail today. Um, that go is going to every household in the community uh, to get further feedback uh, on the options, what people are thinking. Uh, it's certainly not a vote. Uh, it's not a straw poll. It's just giving SBAC some more input as SBAC makes important decisions in the next month or two. Uh, on May 2nd, uh, SBAC will be meeting and learning about the survey results, so that will be a public meeting right here. And on May 9th, actually, the School Building Advisory Committee, after months and months of work, uh, will be selecting one option. Um, and it could be a combination of the three we have right now. We don't know yet. Um, once that happens, it will move to school board deliberation. Um, and school board uh, will be having a meeting in late July, potentially, uh, to vote on an option to move forward to referendum. Uh, and then town council, if all is going well, will vote in August, mid-August, to move uh, the solution to referendum. So. A lot of decisions to make over the next few months, a lot of input from the public, and certainly a lot of work for, for members of SBAC um, on that. So excited about our progress. Um, what else can I update you on? Uh, enrollment numbers are, are stable. I uh, don't really have much to report there. Um, Tiffany, where are we at with uh, kindergarten enrollment? 95. 95, so as of right now, 95 kindergartners for next year. Um, so that's good to keep an eye on in terms of those class sizes. Um, our last student day is on Monday the 17th, June 17th. That will be a half day for students as long as there's no more storms. Um, last time I think I jinxed us by announcing the last day and then we got hit with storms. So hopefully we're all set there. Um, we have a pre-K grant application we've just finished. It's not as big as the last one, but we're allowed to... Um, pursue $33,000 per classroom. We have two pre-K classrooms at Cape Care, um, so we're looking to get $66,000 to help support uh, or offset an ed tech. Um, so we don't know that yet. Thank you, Marcy, and the team for all your work on that. Um, notification of retirements. Uh, we'll celebrate them in person in June, but definitely wanted to let you and the public know. Uh, Janet Eckler, our special education evaluator, she's been with us for three years. Um, Heather Geike, grade five teacher, uh, 14 years with us. Mary Jane Johnston, elementary visual art teacher, 16 years with CAPE. Betsy Nielsen, high school teacher, uh, technology, 34 years with CAPE. Uh, just amazing. Susan Pillsbury, uh, special education ed tech and, and former teacher actually, has been with us for 23 years. 
Tom Robinson, an elementary special educator, 30 years with CAPE, and that Wally, um, grade five teacher, Whaley, uh, 25 years in CAPE. So tremendous, uh, we'll celebrate them in person in June, but uh, I really wanna thank them for all they've given to us. Really impressive. Uh, and finally, I can't share their names because it's confidential, uh, but we have had six teachers nominated for County Teacher of the Year um, from each building, um, some from each building, so that's really exciting. They were nominated by their peers or, or parents or in some cases students, um, so that's really exciting. So we'll find out more about that later on. So any questions for me? All right, just in terms of the district, I heard from our student reps, they're ready for vacation. I think we all are. Um, it's been a, a long, full winter and spring, but uh, really excited how much happens in this great community and our schools. I uh, appreciate all the work of our staff, our administration, our volunteers, our parents, community members, the school board. Um, it takes all of us to achieve all the things we do um, and support each other. So I hope everyone has some time away or just out in their yard next week. So that's all I have. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we're moving on to action items. So item 9A, may I have a motion please? I make a motion to approve the Cape Robotics team trip for VEX Robotics World Championship in Dallas, Texas between April 25th and April 30th, 2024. And, sorry. Certainly I could talk about that, but since Alex is here, do you want to share a little bit about that trip? Uh, so I, I guess first of all, sometimes uh, uh, questions come up while well, we're going right from the state championship to worlds, but that is just what it's called. Uh, it always happens in the States. It happened for years in Kentucky, and now we're in Dallas, Texas, which is actually the home of VEX Robotics. But teams do come in from all over the world. Um, so in the, in the States, you have to qualify coming out of your state championship, typically. And it is the case that the last three years, we've qualified three teams in each of the last three years to go on to Worlds, which is unprecedented for this program, but it is a growing program. So I think we really rebounded out of uh, COVID in, um, you know, in style. Uh, it's really wonderful to see. The uh, expenses for this program, for this uh, birth at Worlds go up every year. So I think that we've, we've responded with, we have a, I have a wonderful boosters, boosters organization uh, supporting us, but I think we've pivoted to discussing, well, should we be looking at being an, an, you know, a full year kind of operation rather than let's kick into gear when it comes time to Worlds. There are some other efforts to offset costs across uh, the state of Maine. So I think it's, a, it's something that all the teams from the different schools are aware of. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity for teams. It is so eye-opening for teams to go to Worlds and see other teams from not just Colorado or California, but China and other parts of the world, Singapore, uh, field some just really outrageously good teams. And for us to see them take that knowledge back to the program um, is just really valuable. Kids love the experience, it's fun. Uh, they reveal live the uh, next year's challenge, so it gets, you know, it gets the gears turning right away. Um, but we're again very thankful for the support that we've received year after year from the community, from the school board, the schools, area businesses. Uh, any questions? Okay, I think we're all set and super excited. Yes, yeah, so, so we, we are too, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. All right, item 9B, may I have a motion, please? I make a motion that we accept the following CEEF awarded grant with an approximate value of $15,000. It's the selling room in school residency for the five fourth grade classes. Second. Thank you. And 
Can you talk about this a little bit? Yeah, I can. I'm actually going to share a little bit from what Steve uh, shared on this. This grant was awarded to the five fourth grade teachers for a residency program by the Telling Room, uh, who will spend 10 weeks in each fourth grade classroom working with students to produce a piece of writing, helping them craft and edit their pieces, and ultimately produce a published book of those works. Uh, students get the opportunity to work with writers and telling room volunteers who help them learn to craft their writing and show them that everyone can be writers. This will take uh, take place spring 2025. So I uh, really appreciate the telling room. Uh, fabulous organization. So this is a great opportunity for our students to learn to write or improve their writing. Really support this. Comments or discussion? I don't want to be in fourth grade. <laughs> All those in favor? Thank you. Item 9C, may I have a motion, please? Make a motion to consider with consideration to approve high school music program students traveling to the 2025 National Festival to participate in concert series in Washington, D.C. on April from April 17th to the 21st. Second. Thank you. And I could certainly talk about this as well, but I think Robert's here actually still, so come on down, please, if you can share this amazing trip. You guys all got it, and basically what I did was I took the um, school board policies, essentially, and used that as my outline. Oops, excuse me to go through and, and bullet point any of the um, any of the questions they might have and I'm, I'm happy to answer other questions. Essentially this started um, uh, in my previous employee I had a, um, a marching band that, that did the uh, Festival of States uh, tour. It was actually the National Memorial Day Parade and uh, that company that, that runs that they do two the National Memorial Day Parade and the Festival uh, of the States and they looked me up up here and called me up and said hey I see you teach in Maine now like you know we loved having your group down. Would you would you consider coming down? I said I'd I'd love to do that. I think it would be a, a great next step for the the program. I think when you see all the things that are happening, this is a, a nice way to continue to foster that um, uh, relationship with the town and, and all the support that we get to take our, our show kind of on the road, if you will. Um, and I said I only had one condition, and that would be if we could take the chorus with us. <laughs> so um, I talked with Joanne and and who's here today. And um, we were like, this would be terrific. Let's put this together. And uh, so we started putting the entire thing together. If you look at it, you'll see it's, it's quite a comprehensive trip um, with performances at uh, the Lincoln Memorial for the band and the New York uh, Presbyterian Church for uh, New York Ave Presbyterian Church for the, the uh, concert choir known as uh, Lincoln's Church. Uh, there are uh, educational spots on there as well. We have clinics with the um, commander of the Air Force Band uh, for the band and the director of choral studies for George Mason University uh, for the chorus. Um, we also get to audit the uh, Marine Corps uh, president's own uh, band rehearsal um, and as well as all the monuments and tours and all the things that are on that uh, thing that you can see for our sample itinerary. Um, and I think it pretty much, you know, there it's, it, if you go through, there's a very comprehensive list of all the things that we're trying to make sure we put in place for it. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you all have. Okay. So one question would be about, um, so since it's next year, you're, are you starting to work with eighth grade families now or at the end of the school year? Correct. Through, through Caitlin, once the approval process is done, Caitlin and Missy and I have talked about putting that all together and it'll be available to the incoming freshmen all the way through seniors, anyone who signs up to go, will be able to go with us. Great. That looks very well done. Questions for Mr. Wheeler? No, the only question, I was looking at the, um, and I probably should have noticed it before, but <clears throat> the cost is 1500 to the district per student. Um, the part that says students pricing attached is, um, is restricted. A, is it a link? Oh, I beg your pardon. That's terrible. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I was just trying to take a peek at it. If you could. Sure. No, the $1,500 is, um, that's a deposit 
that would be the school district and that wouldn't be per kid that would just be for the that gets us a chance to get the permits rolling and all the things that we're going to need for that um, uh, in terms of, of getting all that thing taken care of the pricing for the students I believe is 1600 per student based on the amount of people that would be going but when you do when you can look at that link you can see um, that it's it's graduated so it'll show like if this amount of students goes it'll be this price if it's this amount, it'll be this price, but it won't be more than 1600 per uh, per student. And we have three uh, three fundraisers throughout the year that we're planning on right now to, for them to do that. Awesome. And I know you've done a really nice job with your materials, but for the public, it's nice to talk about. So um, are there plans for scholarships for students that even with the fundraising might not be able to? We've made provisions for uh, students and we'll work with individual families as needed. Great, mm -hmm. thank you. I do wanna thank you for this packet, it's fabulous. Great, thank you. I certainly support the trip and I know Principal Springer does as well. It's a great opportunity. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor? Thank you. <laughs> a student that's probably going on the trip right there. <laughs> All right, moving on to item 9D. May I have a motion, please? I make a motion that we adopt the 2024-2025 school board budget of $35,446,986 and the related revenue components. Second. That was a tie. <laughs> I'm actually going to go to the podium okay. to present, if that would help. The crowd has thinned out a lot. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Um, I'm really excited to present the budget to the board. The school board's actually worked on this extensively. Uh, this began all the way back in October, which I'll describe in a bit. Um, but I think this is a momentous night, it always is, um, to come before you talk about the budget, share what's in it, how we got here, and what it means. Um, but I don't think I could tell you any more than what it means than all these students up here before you tonight. Um, and all of the work that goes into this budget actually matters. Um, and what's in a school budget matters. And it does impact what we can offer students and staff. So um, I really enjoyed hearing all the students tonight and hearing their success. And I just think of all the little successes that happen every single day in our schools that we don't see, but the budget impacts. Um, so to me, and I know Marcy, uh, this budget uh, means something a great deal to us. So I'm gonna share with you uh, what's in it, how we got here, uh, and certainly answer your questions before you vote. Um, so any budget is built off of the school board strategic plan goals. Uh, I'm not going to read these off, but uh, one is around health and well-being, two is around global competency, three is multiple pathways and definitions of success, Four is safe, sustainable, and effective facilities. And five are environmental, uh, environmental responsibility. This came out of a community-wide conversation several years ago now, five year, years ago now, where these goals came out. So these uh, are wrapped into our budget, as are the school board goals that you all adopted in January. One meets the academic, social, emotional, and health needs of all students. Two, supports recruitment and retention of high quality personnel. Three, supports appropriate and ongoing building maintenance and repair. Four, supports the advancement of instructional skills of our staff. Five, reflects a careful consideration of the effectiveness and efficiency of each line item and position. And six, strives for clear, transparent, and regular communication with the public throughout the budget process. 
So this is a quick overview, uh, and then we'll dive into the details. So at the top, you can see the number um, uh, that Jen read in the motion, uh, 35 million, uh, and the expenditure increase, 3.74%, and the percent projected property tax rate increase of 2.51%. You can see in this bottom graph um, where we are in comparison to the rest of Cumberland County in terms of expenditure increase, um, and every community faces budgets and challenges, um, and I'm not doing this to say we're um, any better than anyone else. Um, last year, our budget expenditures were higher. Um, this year, they're different. Every year, a budget is different, as you know, as the board knows. Um, I'm really proud of where we ended up. Uh, we took this seriously, obviously, from October till today. How do we get this number down? How do we keep our expenditure increases down uh, and thus uh, lower the impact on property tax rates? Um, so this took a lot to get here, uh, and I'll talk about how we got here. A few, I, I had, uh, blew this up a little bit because I know that graph was hard to see, um, but you can see where we are in Cumberland County compared to our neighbors in terms of projected expenditure increase. Uh, this is kind of a look historically where we've been with expenditures. Uh, and as I said already, every year is different. And every one of those numbers tells a story about what was happening in Cape, the state of Maine, the U.S., uh, the world. Um, and there's a lot of factors that go into how much uh, we expend on teaching and learning um, in this town. Um, but you can see um, we're trending back down where we were or closer to where we were um, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. Um, there's no guarantee we'll be there next year, um, but I am pleased to see um, we brought expenditure increase down by a lot. Uh, historic property tax percent change impact, uh, very important obviously to every household in Cape Elizabeth. Um, so this kind of tells the story. And again, every year something happened during those years, potentially we lost some state funding that can cause um, property tax rates to go up because the uh, costs go more locally than the state. Um, and you can see where we are now, um, almost the lowest we've been over the last nine or so years. So I'm really proud of that. Uh, I, I'm hoping it makes a difference. Uh, this is a historic comparison looking at expenditures and property taxes. And again, we could look at every one of those years and tell you why that is the way it is. And they tend to trend together. Um, for expenditures and property taxes, but both went down for the, the FY25 budget. Uh, historic state school funding. Um, we are now at where the state's funding about, I believe, 16% of our, our budget. Um, so that's good news. Um, it's going in the right direction. Um, but in our last meeting with the board, we talked about state funding, uh, the EPS formula, how that works. Um, but our funding has gone up uh, from the state uh, this year in particular, that was driven by uh, the state valuation overall has gone up. Um, so that lowered the local number of dollars we have to raise. And it, uh, we also saw an increase in our special education and gifted and talented lines. So uh, that's where we are today, but there's no telling what next year will bring, but we'll deal with that next year. All right, the timeline, how do we create this? Um, we begin in October. Uh, in November, when the administrators of each program or school begin working with their staff, they review their budgets, they go line by line, they look at their personnel, uh, what are their needs, where are they at. Uh, eventually, uh, they start working with our finance director, Marcy Weeks, and myself in December, um, and we look at every line and every position, discuss it. Um, and then finally, in January, um, the district leadership team brings their budget, our budget, uh, to the school board for our first workshop in January. And we start from there and have multiple workshops um, at the, in the high school library. And the school board asked lots of questions. I think it was probably 50 or so this year. Uh, great questions. We answer them, we present our budget, we talk about our needs. Um, we advocate for why we feel the budget should be the way it is. Uh, that eventually gets to tonight um, where you'll vote on the proposed budget, then we'll present the budget um, to the town council on the Monday after vacation. Then there's a town council public hearing May 6th um, to get the public's feedback on the school budget. Finally, May 13th, the town council will vote on the school budget. And then 
uh, we go to a town referendum on June 11th. So there's quite a process when you build this budget and a lot goes into it and there are hours and hours and hours of our best thinking on creating this. Um, and it really takes a team to create a school budget. So originally in January, um, thinking back, school board, you can remember this night, we gathered in the high school uh, library and this is where it was at that time. Uh, originally a 4.13% expenditure increase and we were looking at a property tax rate increase projected at 3.44 at that time. So what was in that budget? Existing contracts for salaries and benefits, 83% of our budget is personnel. Uh, debt service is 2% of our budget, but we saw a decrease for FY25, so about $200,000, so that reduced the budget some. Uh, facilities costs for fuel, electricity, and repair and maintenance did, had no change, so we kept those flat. Um, administrators and their budgets uh, kept their increase to 3.07%, uh, so that made a difference. Uh, all new position requests equaled $467,000 uh, or so, um, and at that point we were allocating around $500,000 for fund balance. I'll talk more about that later on. Um, and back in January, we had no idea what the health insurance ceiling would be. Uh, so that, that means what was the highest percent increase we could possibly see. Uh, we learned that, uh, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, these are the uh, new positions in the budget. You can see up top uh, what goals we aim to meet with these. Uh, five of our goals were met uh, through these positions. Um, and these are really needs-based. Um, so the first, uh, special services, special ed, uh, 0.2 academic evaluator. Uh, we've had an increase in referrals um, that Ryan presented to you. Um, so this will bring that position to full time. Uh, we're adding a reading specialist uh, to help with our reading instruction and our reading professional development, uh, K-12. Uh, we did reallocate an ed tech position to reduce the cost of that though. Um, so that's important to note. Uh, we have a 0.8 multilingual teacher um, that's to increase that to full time because we've had an increase uh, in our ELL uh, students um, and need to meet their needs. Uh, we've added a one, uh, an extended learning instructional strategist, 712. Uh, that person's really going to work with teachers uh, and students, uh, both our gifted and talented students and other high achieving students um, to help them succeed um, and deal with all, all the pressures they face uh, and also help our teachers instruct, uh, improve their instruction. It's good to note that that is uh, offset um, by the state EPS formula. Um, so that's a nice, nice benefit there. Um, Pre-K at Cape Care, um, we've added uh, one ed tech. Um, we have three ed techs at uh, Pre-K. Um, so we need to meet the needs of those 30 students there every day. Uh, mindfulness facilitator, 0.6 position, um, so a little bit above half time, and that person's working with students and staff on mindfulness, social, emotional uh, needs. Um, as you can remember from our student experience survey, uh, we had a lot of results on the stress uh, our students are facing, and we want to help them stress better, uh, so this is an important position for that. Um, and uh, and a, another addition is a groundskeeper. Um, Public Works does a great job in this town, um, but they're having to take care of a lot of town property and town um, just green space, particularly with the fort. Um, and we're finding it's difficult to keep our campus looking as well as it should. Um, and that's no fault of theirs, they're, they have a lot to do. So we're adding a, a groundskeeper to focus on our, our site, our school sites, uh, around our fields, around our schools. Um, we think that's really important. Um, we need to take care of that space. Um, so it says $13,810, but we're actually absorbing some funds, uh, reallocating some funds out of transportation to make that a full, fully paid position. So those are the eight positions, or not eight, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven positions, new positions in this budget. Um, we think these help us meet uh, five of the budget goals of the school board. So we carried on, uh, we met again um, in March, March 26th, and you can see there are some changes. 
um, our expenditure number went down and our uh, property tax rate increase went down. So how'd that happen? Well, we eliminated a vacant school psychologist position. Um, this work will now be contracted out of local entitlement, so that's a federal grant. So no longer costs uh, money to the uh, local tax base. And we increased uh, fund balance allocation to $650,000 uh, in order to lower the tax burden. So it was originally, as you can remember, in January, 500,000. So we increased it um, by 150,000. And that led from uh, projected tax impact from around three to 2.51%. And we finally learned what the health ceiling was gonna be in the state, 11.5%. Uh, uh, that was worrisome. Um, we budget 10%. We hope we always can come under that, but we budgeted 10%. We realized then we were above that. Um, so we had to figure out how to navigate that. Um, so we met again on April 2nd, um, and you can see the numbers up top. Um, and what, it, what happened at this point? Um, we realized uh, Dave Bagdasarian, our outstanding facilities director, had presented to the board about our SIPs budget, CIP, capital improvement, budget, um, how it has traditionally, no fault of anyone, been lower than needed to maintain our buildings. We do the best we can, uh, but in difficult budget years, uh, sometimes that gets cut. Uh, his advocacy um, convinced myself, Marcy, and eventually the board that we needed to increase our CIP budget um, from 500,000 to 200, uh, to 700,000. Um, we had tons of needs in our schools. Um, as Harriman has pointed out in all the presentations, um, this will help some. Um, but how did we do that without increasing the budget? Um, we have a decrease in electricity costs due to LED lighting being put in our schools. And with the solar farm, we're seeing lower rates, so that's gonna help us. So we allocated $37,000. Um, there's a paid family medical leave act that we were um, had some money, $103,000 budgeted. Um, we were told very recently we did not need to do that for this upcoming budget, um, but for future budgets, so we were able to reallocate $103,000. And we finally solidified the mindful, uh, mindfulness facilitator would be 0.6 full-time, not full-time, and that al allowed us to allocate $60,000. So all that, um, I'm really pleased to see us increase CIP. I wish it was more. Uh, it needs to be more eventually. I think every year we're gonna have to come back and revisit this and add more money into this um, because we need to maintain our buildings. Uh, and finally, we learned our health insurance increase was 9.51%. Just so you know what that means in money, um, that's $225,000 um, that that costs us as a district. Yeah, um, so 9.51, we obviously wanna offer our, our, our staff health insurance and support that um, but it does have a cost and wanted you to be aware of what that was uh, hopefully that percent will be lower next year all right so some fiscal challenges uh, just an overview uh, salaries and benefits are 83 percent of our total budget uh, we have facilities costs for fuel electricity and repair maintenance capital improvements those are all in the budget contingencies uh, the health insurance I've talked about and of course, our new positions to meet school board uh, goals and strategic plan goals. Uh, final summary uh, of the numbers, what we got from the state, um, what we applied for fund balance, what uh, we're needing to raise locally from property taxes, um, other revenue um, that's coming from student fees, activity fees, parking fees, that sort of thing. That's where that number comes from. And that's where you get the grand total at the bottom of $35,446,986. So a little bit about fund balance. I'm sorry, board, for throwing all this at you uh, and to members of the public. There's a lot here, um, but I know the board has spent months on this. Um, so this is a projected use of fund balance. Um, and fund balance basically is a way for us to offset um, taxes if we can and also be prepared, for instance, if we lost a lot of state funding one year, we'd need to allocate some of our fund balance to offset that. So this is a past use and projected use, and you can see how we're trying to strategically think about the amount we use um, and where we're headed. So for this coming year, we're projecting using $650,000.
And you can see finally um, the mill rates. Um, so that's the amount of money a household would pay on a thousand dollars of value for their home. And as you all know, um, we've been through a reevaluation over this past year plus. Um, so the whole value of the town has increased significantly. And so you can see that now in order to fund our budget, um, we need to raise uh, $8.10 as a mill rate, which is half of what it was. Um, but that's just because the value of people's homes have gone up. So that's kind of how that, that works. Um, so this will help people calculate what their potential taxes will be. All right, again, a reminder, big picture. Uh, that's the total budget. The expenditure increase of 3.74%. Property tax rate increase of 2.51%. Uh, we are, again, the lowest expenditure increase in Cumberland County. Uh, that wasn't easy to get to. Uh, I'm proud of our work, but more proud of that we're still going to be offering excellent education for our students. We're going to continue to recruit and retain fantastic staff. Um, I don't know if you saw in the paper today, there was an article on teacher shortages, shortages excuse me, uh, around Maine. Um, that catches my eye every time I see it. We've seen the same thing with bus drivers, ed techs, food service, uh, even administrators. Um, so it's really important that we uh, recruit and retain our excellent people. So remember your goals, school board goals. Um, and I think this budget accomplishes those. Uh, I think we've made improvements in the district as we try to do so every year and we've been fiscally uh, uh, responsible. So that's the timeline, uh, what's ahead. Uh, I look forward to us presenting to town council after vacation. Uh, I know Jen, you'll be excited to do that. I'll be right there with you um, and explain the budget to them and then eventually get to the, the public and the citizen vote. So. Whew, I talked a lot there. Happy to answer any questions or, or get feedback from the board. Yeah, I was just wondering in terms of one of the school board's goals being uh, pursuing all pathways, um, why there's, I guess, no funding for the career and technical aspect as I see in like my sheet here. I'm just wondering where money for those pathways. Yeah, great question, Jack. That's actually, it used to come through the districts now it automatically goes from the, the state, the main DOE, right to PAS and right to WRVC. So we still support it, it just doesn't funnel through us. Cool, thanks. But great question. Any other questions, comments? No, but you weren't here last year, and I think it's important to note that we also added an extended learning, um, an ELO coordinator in the district, which also will support those multiple pathways for students through I don't know who the teacher is, I forget her name at the high school now that's doing the yellow. But <clears throat> I think Warren Tarantino has moved yeah. into that and then Sarah okay. Plummer. Sarah Plummer is. Yeah. So that's also a way that we've been supporting that. That's a really good question though, because sometimes, and that's not the only, so it's the only place in here, but there's a, another version of the budget that will make your eyes go. And where things get zeroed out because they're moved somewhere else and it's sort of like, it feels like a red flag. So thank you. Jack, that's going to remind me to talk about that next year. So thank you. And maybe we add it into our presentation for town council. Town council. That's a good idea. So yeah. maybe Jack comes. <laughs> Teach you to ask a question. <laughs> so typically at this time, um, before we move on to vote, if uh, members might want to say a few words about how they feel about this budget. I'm not gonna say why you support this budget. I know I support this budget. So I'm gonna open the floor. I think as the <clears throat> finance chair, we started off on the right foot. I think that you know all of the administrators provided a really thoughtful um, line by line looking at things that we used during COVID that we're no longer using and they really looked at every aspect of that budget and really added only what they felt was necessary to meet the needs of our students based on a lot of the asks that are gonna come back up with our aging buildings and whatnot. And I think the process each year gets more seamless and more seamless. We had a Google document with all of the questions from the school board and we really were able to get through that in one session with only, I think maybe one extra follow-up question. And 
when the numbers came in too high, I think that Marcy and Dr. Record made a great use of the fund balance and also making sure that we added additional funding for our capital improvement because we do have aging buildings and we are seeing these sort of uh, <coughs> pipe bursts and things like that. And so I do wanna thank the administration and Dr. Record for coming in at such a great you know, low number and meeting the needs of our students. I think we are so fortunate to have a district leadership team that worked as hard as they did um, to create a budget that stands on its own, that supports our goals, but was also clearly mindful of the landscape um, for the budget this year, on the uncertainties that the town is, is looking at, and was able to um, balance those goals and give us something that was really um, robust and tight and thoughtful about use of resources. So I am grateful to the district leadership team. You guys did the heavy lifting for sure on this budget and we were in the very fortunate position to listen and ask questions and um, really pleased with what has been the result of this. I'll echo what both of, uh, oh my gosh, I just forgot both of your names, but Jen and Kathleen said. <laughs> about the budget. Um, I think that it's uh, particularly compared to last year, which felt like a very difficult budget season, uh, and where the, the town was asked to support a very high increase, um, that it was uh, important that this year uh, we, we, we kept the number low despite, despite significant problems that we're having with the buildings and ongoing large conversations about significant investments and uh, difficult needle to thread at this moment and it um, really went above and beyond what I was expecting and I think it's a, it's a great budget and a great accomplishment and I'm happy to support it. Yeah, I'll just sort of summarize what I said at the uh, budget workshop but I think it, um, I like that it still moves us forward. I said a version of that, but it's sort of moving us forward still, even though the increases are are um, some of the lowest they've been in the last 10 years that we can see. So I think we're accomplishing a really efficient budget, um, one that um, raises taxes to the least amount uh, to, to still meet our goals, but sort of make these sort of targeted investments, I think is important. Um, and, then also, and then finally, with the buildings themselves, I mean, it's important to continue to put money into these buildings. Um, particularly the high school is not the focus of the SBAC. We're gonna make some investments, but the focus. So we gotta to continue to upkeep uh, with the buildings. And so I strongly support the investments in the CIP side of it too. So, but thanks for the administration and all the staff that worked on this. This is where the real work goes on. Um, and you know we're, we're here to give our opinions and our thoughts, but at the end of the day, it's the, it's the superintendent and all the staff. So thank you for that. I think I, I, I'm happy to yeah. hear from Jack from, and or Sophia. Just from all the students, thank you guys for putting all this work in for a budget that really does work for us every year. Um, and from a more analytical point of view, um, I think a really key highlight of that presentation was how low the tax increase was compared to last year, especially with the goal of um, bringing to the public the budget while also trying to, you know, give them a, a plan for new schools or, or very renovated schools. So having that tax increase be lower um, and then also highlighting, you know, that big cost of new schools is a better strategy than, you know, last year when we tried to get that 9% tax increase with the budget and then also having new schools on top of that. So I think you guys did a really great job with that. Yeah, I guess um, just to say one more thing about that, I think that um, to add on to what Jack was saying, it, it for me, it just shows a lot about like, everybody on the committee um, and like, the goals um, that you all have in mind um, when it comes to the public and what the public's asking for and um, students and families. So um, I just think it shows a lot about the kind of people that are making the budget and the kind of people that are thinking about these policies. Um, and it's just really wonderful to have that in our, in our schools. So thank you. Thank you. Can we, like, can you two take a gap year and just <laughs> Just stay. <laughs> Just stay. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I echo everything my fellow board members have said, and um, what I've really been reflecting upon tonight is, for instance, when we're talking about being recognized as outstanding music educators, you know, among the entire country, we're not lucky. 
these decisions are made intentionally. We are making intentional decisions. And when we see these students here, these are the fruits of these intentional decisions. And it feels really great. I love not being able to park. <laughs> it means it's gonna be a great night. But it also means that we're being wise with our budget. It means we're giving the support to the students that they need and deserve. And um, so I am so proud of this budget. I appreciate the, it's not hours, it's days, it's weeks of work that um, administrators put into this. And being thoughtful about, like Jack said, we, we have a really nice low tax increase, but like Phil said, we are still moving the district forward. We are, we are looking ahead to meet students' needs. So I wholly support this budget. All right. Further questions or discussion? All right, all those in favor? Thank you. Item E, and yes, you have to read the whole motion. <laughs> Whoever is willing to make the motion actually needs to read. It could be the, the finance chair. Sure. <laughs> I make the motion that we approve the recommended 2024-2025 budgetary warrant article for submission to the town clerk. The motion below is to give I the think you can just skip the move to like pursuant okay. to. Pursuant to 20A MRSA sections 1486-2 and 2307, the form of notice of amounts adopted at town council meeting be approved and that the superintendent of schools authorizes, authorized and directed to complete said notice in accordance with the meeting at which the school budget is approved and to cause said notice as completed to be delivered to the town clerk for display at all polling places for the school budget validation referendum to be held following the meeting at which the town council approves the school budget. Should have prepped for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. All right, to the policy section of the evening. May I have a motion, please? Move to approve policy JLCEA, managing students with food allergies. Uh, JLCEA was last reviewed in 2005. It was presented for first read at the March 12th business meeting. We have not received any comments or feedback. And these updates um, were recommended by the school nurses. They pertain to parent communication with nurses about student food allergies and plans. Any questions or discussion? All right, all those in favor? Thank you. Next up we have first readings, no votes. Okay. Um, policy IKF. You guys, this is exciting. I don't usually introduce a first read with exciting, but I think this is. Um, as I think the board is aware, and, and for any public who are listening, a lot of work and discussion has gone into the updates for policy IKF, um, some of which the board was involved with at our, our January workshop um, and has been ongoing since then. The high school administration and the guidance office has put a lot of thought into updating our approach to academic honors and recognition for graduating seniors. Uh, with a priority, of course, on maintaining the high academic standards um, that our high school is known for, but also moving toward an approach that's more inclusive than our current system allows us to be and is in line with what's happening in schools around the country. Um, and I think, and I, I hope that I'm speaking on behalf of the board when I say we really appreciated the deep dive that the guidance office and the administration did um, into what turns out to be really a wide variety of approaches that peer schools in our state and region have been using. Um, and they gave us a presentation which was quite a rich review of many of these um, approaches which allowed us to have a really good discussion about our high school and our system of recognition, being mindful of the results of the student experience survey, some of the feedback we had from students about um, the experience of 
it's balancing stress and achievement and really how can a high school move forward and celebrate hard work, celebrate um, accomplishments, celebrate multiple pathways, um, and also contribute to promoting a student love of learning um, and, and thinking about some of the environmental aspects that our, our system of academic recognition has been a part of. So um, the updates that you'll see in IKF reflect the intention of the high school between spring of 2024 and spring of 2028 um, to phase out of the current system of academic recognition and honors, which would be the valedictorian, salutatorian, top 10%, a system that's been in place for quite a while, um, and shift to a different system of recognition, such as the Latin honors system, which is currently under development. Um, you'll see language in section 4H um, that specifies el what eligibility looks like for each class because this will be something that will happen in phases. It won't happen all at once. Um, but what we've learned from the administration and the guidance office is this has been, they've really spent a lot of time in the high school. They've brought in feedback from a lot of teachers and staff. People are very excited about um, continuing to think about how our high school acknowledges achievement, how it celebrates it, um, and really moving our high school forward. So I think this is gonna be um, a great path forward for Cape High School, and we're really grateful to the administration for all the work that they've done. Okay, moving to the less exciting stuff. Uh, policy JKD, suspension of students. JKD was last reviewed in 2014. The updates you'll see are um, required to align with change in statute, um, specifically that prohibits the suspension of students younger than sixth grade, except in specific circumstances. Um, these changes have been reviewed by the district leadership team to make sure that the policy aligns with reasonable and current practice. And to that end, we also reviewed language in the policy that goes beyond the legal requirements and discussed approaches to parental notification, um, which is required by statute, but that's not specified in statute how that's carried out, so how that, what that might look like in our district. Policy KDA, Public Information Program. KDA is a new policy uh, whose inclusion in our manual is recommended by the MSMA. There have been changes in law and recent revisions in policy BHC that are prompting this recommendation to adopt um, a new policy that specifically addresses public communication and information, and I think you'll see that the proposed policy ensures and affirms our current communication practices. And then finally, we have policy KLD, Public Complaints About School Personnel. KLD was last reviewed in 2009, and the updates that you that you'll see were added to address due process, confidentiality, process procedures, delineation between complaint procedures and the collective bargaining, bargaining agreement, and the process used in the case of a complaint against the superintendent. Um, this policy is also being recoded. Um, going forward, it will be in the manual as KED, and this is meant to align with NSBA policy code. That's what we got. Good work at policy committee. Yeah. Any questions for Kathleen at this time? Remember, you can send your um, comments and questions ahead of policy committee. That is really helpful. Um, and um, we'll be talking about when next policy committee will be in a moment. Thank you, Kathleen. So moving on to item 10, school board agenda requests. Um, school board agenda requests can be made to myself and uh, Dr. Record. We prefer email. We don't do well with verbal stuff. We just, we both go, what? <laughs> so please um, let us know if there's something you feel uh, needs to be on the agenda. Item 11, committee reports. I'm embarrassed to say I don't think I made it to the PADS meeting. I had an emergency come up that meeting and didn't reach out to the board, and I feel very embarrassed about that, and I'm admitting it in public. <laughs> Typically, we are very well represented at PADS. Yeah, that's a meeting I could not make either. I, typically, there have been one or two guidance counselors, the principal, this like, Cape Elizabeth is typically well represented, so my apologies to PADS. Um, I know that they were prepared to be talking about enrollment at that meeting, and um, they, 
I think they have kind of a, a wonderful problem right now where there are more students than they have spots for. So that's kind of a wonderful thing to hear about that there it's it's really hot in popularity. Yes. Um, Heather is not here with us tonight and I don't know has technology committee met. I don't know. Has technology committee pardon? Excellent. Technology committee will be meeting soon. Um, Cindy is not with us tonight. Um, we've heard quite a bit about SBAC and we do have the uh, presentation tomorrow night, which I hope everybody can attend. Even uh, I attended the last one and I didn't participate in any way. I didn't come up, whatever, but it, it was really well done and I feel like it's great for the public, it's great for the board, it's great for everybody. You, you just get a really good understanding. Harriman does a fantastic job of explaining and communicating you know what these options are what they include what they don't include and my understanding is that with each step they are adding specificity Correct. so can i just add on uh, please to encourage people uh to after after in taking the information presented in the forum and whatever manner they choose to do so to be on the lookout for the survey that's being mailed out to everybody's homes to make sure they fill that out and send it back um, and to also pay attention to the last couple additions to the Cape Courier which have had a substantial amount of uh, public public information uh, about the buildings about the project uh, about a whole um, slew of aspects of the, the progress but also about the buildings themselves and the schools and what the needs are and just trying to make the public more under more aware of the problem as a whole uh, versus uh, the, the, the options being presented now uh, and uh, I believe the upcoming um, courier will have even more substantial information in it and that's going to be ongoing and so just encourage people to to learn and to please um, respond to the survey. Thank you, and thank you for pointing that out. I thought the um, information presented in the last career was excellent, and the education and the communication from the SBAC has been excellent. So thank you. Um, Buildings and Grounds is meeting after vacation. We may have settled on a date and time, but... TBD. All right, so upcoming meetings. Uh, so we have mentioned the SBAC public forum tomorrow night right here in Town Hall, 6 p.m. Come one, come all. Um, there is a, a recurring SBAC um, communication subcommittee, and I believe... That's been postponed. Okay, that one has been postponed, but typically is it a... Every Thursday morning. Every Thursday morning, all right. so. If you look at this agenda, I'm not gonna read every communications committee. Um, buildings and grounds, um, we will publish that. It, it'll be shortly after vacation. Um, the school board budget presentation to town council is April 22nd at 6 p.m. right here in town hall. And um, following that meeting the same night, the we will be updated, the school board and town council will be updated by Harriman on their three school solutions, um, hopefully six, by 6.30, 7 p.m. Um, the, there is a follow-up date for the school board budget presentation only if needed for April 23rd. Um, on um, April 23rd, we have a school board workshop. It'll be an abbreviated workshop that evening because we will be meeting here for our um, auditor's report first and then moving over to the library for um, workshop. Policy committee will be meeting on April 24th at 4.15 p.m. Um, in Jordan Conference Room and a regular school building advisory committee on May 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Paths will be May 9th at 8.30 p.m. a.m. at Westbrook. And then School Building Advisory Committee on May 9th, 6.30 p.m. in Town Hall. Have I missed anything? Is anything listed incorrectly? Probably it's an SBAC finance uh, meeting that you'll have at that time. 
I'm like, there's probably some SBAC finance subcommittee meetings that will also be happening. Um, they move around more frequently than the communications meetings, so I can't cite them, but if you are interested in attending, they are usually posted on the town website. Great, thank you. All right, item 13, may I have a motion, please? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, have a great night. <laughs>